Hey, good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Hands On with Exxon. How are you doing, David? I'm doing great. It's been uh, for the first week here where I live. It's been the first week of uh, real autumn with uh, rains that we were waiting for them. We were needing them uh, from a long time ago. Where are you? Uh, where are you today? I'm in Gran Canaria, and uh, it's been very nice weather all week, um, except for tonight. And can you guess who had his clothes hanging outside to dry this night when it was raining very heavily? <laughs> So the yeah. same clothes are now wetter than when I hung them up and they are now, I centrifugado them, it's a Spanish washing machine and I uh, put them up again inside the house. So. Okay, so next time you need to remember to check the weather forecast before... Yeah, it. definitely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, life lesson learned. <laughs> well, so that means that you actually started your, your digital nomad life. Yeah, finally. Last week was DevOps Morocco and the week there uh, before that was DevOps uh, Belgium. So it's been two fun weeks of conferences, but now the real work starts again. Um, like hanging out with you. Uh, so I could do worse. Um, and yeah, okay. so, um, you can see I have a beautiful room here at Co-Living 9007 in the Carinary Islands. And it's been great so far. Great roommates, not too much noise. So well, it's uh, that's nice. Good. That's good. Probably... Can we, we if you are going to be around Madrid, or maybe I can, if you're going to stay in Canary Islands for, for some time, maybe, who knows, maybe we can even meet for some, for some session and do that session together. That sounds fun. That's some, definitely something we should do. Okay. So what do you think we should be doing today, David? Okay, uh, I guess that we should first uh, try to see what we have um, well, what we have done in the previous two episodes or the previous two sessions. Even though this is the episode two, this is just because we, of course, started to count our episodes by index zero, not by index one. So we have done uh, episode zero, episode one, and now this is episode two. So we can start by doing that, and after that, uh, maybe we can we can add some uh, no, maybe we can add some validation to the commands because I guess we have been speaking these uh, past uh, days that uh, there is a point in which you need to validate the command, and there is a point in which you don't need to validate the command because uh, when you actually are invoking the event sourcing handler, that's not where you want to validate things. But if we want or if we need to validate things, and that's something that for sure we are going to need, where should we do in that kind of validation in order to decide whether we can process a command or not? Okay, maybe that's something that we could do. And the other thing, and this is something that I usually uh, get asked a lot, uh, is maybe we can try to get the chance to explain a little bit better, which is the life cycle of the events and commands and how the aggregate is restored and refreshed when we are, or before we are going to invoke the command holder. What do you think? Does it make um, sense? Yeah, a part of it makes sense to me. So let's definitely build more commands and stuff and show people how, it, how we can build an aggregate and validate stuff because that's what aggregates are for. Okay, so before, uh, before sharing my, my screen, and for all of those that are uh, following us or that have uh, or that are joining us uh, right today, uh, I would like to remember that we are using uh, live coding that we started from scratch and that we are indeed uh, pushing these contents to a repository. And we this is the repository that we are we are using. Maybe we can try to edit this video before uh, after the recording and add some feature to be able to allow people to click on the actually on the on the link but this is the link of the repo that we are we are using for for all the code that we are writing so that said let's share let's get to the code and let's share what we are what we have so far basically uh what we have is 
an API with a series of commands and events and queries. We only really have one query so far. We have a REST controller, which is the main entry point that we are using, right? And yeah. this is uh, the, the, the REST controller basically is receiving the commands and, uh, and is uh, routing those commands as uh, actually, or those requests as actually commands through the command gateway or the query, query gateway in case it's a query. And then we have a uh, model, our aggregate, which is the entity that we are going to use to model the state of our application. And in this case, we have the conference, of course, because uh, we are uh, implementing a conference tracker. Uh, this is more like uh, aggregate with aggregate required. And last, uh, on last episode, uh, what we did is actually we we added an aggregate member because we had this distinction between the um, conference and the conference edition. The conference edition is basically uh, the edition happening in in a year, and the conference is the name of the conference. For example, the Axonic Conf uh, is happening every year. Uh, this uh, the edition of this year will be the conference edition of Axonic Conference. Uh, for 2023. The same for DevOps Belgium or DevOps Morocco. DevOps will be DevOps Belgium will be the conference. DevOps Morocco 2023 will have been a conference edition. So what we added last uh, on last uh, episode was the ability to add new conference new conference edition to our uh, edition, and we discussed how to route those. Uh, commands to write aggregate and aggregate member. I'm forgetting anything. Um, no, that's yeah. about right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, David, do you want your conference to be editable by anyone in the world? Well, maybe this is something that is not realistic. Maybe uh, we what we could do is just try to define uh the owners of the conference or uh maybe anyone can add a new conference but maybe what you cannot do is you cannot add a conference edition you cannot define a new conference edition for a conference that you you don't own right yeah that sounds uh, reasonable to me well so Maybe this is where we could be adding some kind of validation, right? Uh, I'm I'm going to allow anyone adding a new conference because it's his or her conference. Uh, but what we could do is just consider that the person adding the conference becomes the owner. And then only those owners are the ones that are going to be able to invoke the conference edition command. Do you think All right, so that, yeah, that sounds like it makes the authentication a problem of the domain, right? So it's not longer just an infrastructure concern, like a, like a system you can log into and then have access to everything. Like the objects in the system actually have an access control. Yep. So I think it's very good to include this, like most conferences are organized by someone, like the DevOps chain is made by Stefan Janssen, and mm -hmm. then there are, are other people like also included on that, uh, like the people from DevOps UK, DevOps Morocco. So it makes sense to me uh, that there would be like one super boss, like the owner of the conference, and then he could add other people that can manage it for him as well. Yeah. Like he has his little monkeys doing stuff for him. Yeah. That sounds so also even better because sometimes. Uh, there is a list of administrators or uh, co-organizers co or co-owners of the of the conference. So, how will we implement this? All right. So, I would say that the person that makes the conference becomes the conference owner, right? Yeah. In, in in the first step. So, so I would suggest. Yeah. yeah. 
Why do, why do you think that we should put that? Well, the first thing is that we actually need a way to now uh, know who is uh, the person that uh, that is actually invoking the the at conference command because that's the person that is going to be now the uh, the owner, right? Yeah, correct. So what? Um, so when often you build an Axon app you have um, certain fields that you want to be present for every message, right? So in this case, I think we want every message to have an email to indicate which person is currently editing the conference. Okay. So this is something you can do um, with the metadata of the message. However, this is um, a use case that I kind of want to show off later. So we can just duplicate it in the messages right now. Um, so we can just add an email field to the add to conference command. Okay, that would be my that would have been my first approach, like adding here. Yeah, the, but I think it makes a lot of sense to first see this approach, and then I will show you how to make it much yeah. easier. Uh, let's call it uh, owner or. Yeah, owner email, I would owner say. Owner email, yeah. Or maybe even, yeah. This is going to be mandatory, right? This is going to be mandatory, yes. Okay. So, uh, then uh, the next thing is, uh, well, this is automatically going to be received because uh, we are this is something that we may have to change in the future because we are not going we are not using value objects right now and we are using the same commands on the on the risk controller so that means that for now we are not going to need to change anything here and the same information is going to be added to the aggregate during the add conference command command handler invocation right yeah right so then uh the thing that we need to do is we need to store uh this email on the conference aggregate when we receive the command handler and i guess that the first temptation will be to just keep this information here if we are going to add uh like uh like in it bar uh owner email if we do this city we, we could be tempted to just uh, assign this here right but remember that we are using event sourcing and this is not the, what we should do we, now, if you would assign it here it's it's lost during the next command because there's no event actually carrying that data Okay. Uh, so we will need to add it to the event and then set the field through the event sourcing handler. Okay. This is exactly why I wanted to today try to explain a little bit more which is the aggregate lifecycle or what happened with this in customer code. So that means that uh, the owner email is already kept on the at conference command. So the only thing that we need to do is to move that information and include that information on the event, right? Yeah, correct. So that means that we are going to define the owner mail also here. Right? And then we need to just oh ah, you already did this, right? Yeah, uh, we can we can multitask. So I added the property to the thing and I also if you look at the event sourcing handler okay let's go to the event then you see ID. now that we not only set the conference ID but we set the owner email as well okay perfect so that means that uh, now uh, we can actually check uh, the first validation I would do is uh, do you want us to create the list of all the owners uh now or less or so we just let's just uh, keep it on one owner for now okay the transfer of ownership can come later let's just okay. but when you want a new and to add a new conference edition you want to validate that the guy actually sending the command is the correct guy 
So um, that also means that we also need the uh, this email on on the at conference edition command, right? So let's yeah. add it. And then here we now have the uh, the information that we need to validate this, right? Uh, so actually, now on the command we can get the owner email and check if this is equals this is uh sorry uh, so when you uh, use a normal equals or is not equal operator in kotlin it actually uses the equals function of the objects i was so you could yeah sorry yeah go 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 ahead so you can do this this will invoke the equals function and will work just fine in uh, in Kotlin. Well, actually, I was thinking that maybe we can improve this validation because uh, just in case uh, the the up case on or or down case of the email is not exactly the same. Oh, you want to make it lower case? All right. Yeah. Like this. So. But yeah. you know that. Oh, that's what you were trying to do. Sorry for interrupting. Um, you were trying to ignore case property of the equals function. Exactly. This is exactly what I was. Ah, you knew that already, David. I'm, I'm, uh, very proud. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, I've been doing some calling myself during these weeks. Uh, I've been <laughs> mixing Java and 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 calling. So yeah, I was trying to. To, but I didn't remember exactly how to do it right now. Okay, so we can validate this. And if this is not equals, what should we do? Well, what, uh, what do you normally do in Java when you want something not to happen, David? Well, in this case, I will probably simply return the command handler and not execute the event, probably give a, a log error or a log warning. But probably this is going to be a little bit, a little bit misleading for anyone that is sending the command because his or she uh, is not going to receive any feedback uh, about what happened to the command. So in this case, is uh, one of the things that I will do is throw an, uh, an exception. So. Here is the same, right? Yeah, except for the new. Illegal, which will be the one illegal state. I always abuse the illegal argument exception. Okay, so, and then we can add, uh, so how should we do the, the instance? It's just the same. I can add the message here. Yes. Okay. So this will be a uh, uh, command owner. Sorry. Or let's try to user is not authorized to add additional to the conference uh, command get for it command uh all man which is the name of the conference conference id oh no conference we don't save the name currently Okay. The conference ID should be enough. Okay, perfect. Uh, All right. So let's boot it up and try it out. I already edited only, the rest calls. Okay. Only the 
Do you want to expose someone else's email, David? That's no, not. I'm not going to do the inbox. Absolutely. Oh, only the owner. Oh, I was afraid you're going to type his email right there. No, 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 no. All this right. is uh, something that we we shouldn't be giving hints to the bad guys out there trying to break into our system. Exactly. I was afraid you're going to do that. You want us to be hacked. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> you were not. Okay. So. Uh, is this enough? What what does it happen now? If we uh, how how my question is how is gonna receive the exception uh, whoever is invoking the the command whoever is sending the command? What happens? So can, can you ask, can you ask you what do you mean with what happens if he's sending uh, the command? Which command? In which state? This, this ad. Let's let's. Thing, let's say that the validation now fails for the command. We throw the exception and how that exception is received on the on the on the so, client that who, who send the, the command. That will be a command handler execution exception by Axon Server and it will contain the message of the illegal argument exception. Okay, so we try it and, and yeah. see it. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, Axel Server is not started. I thought. Oh, okay. I had. Hold on a second. This Axel Server is starting. I don't know why why it takes so much time in my machine. I need to figure it this out. Yeah, it's strange. So for the people watching, it normally boots up pretty quickly. Yeah, it's it's actually something that only happens when I'm live streaming. So probably there is something mm. uh, something weird going on when when uh, the the streaming is happening. So at some point. I need to, okay, I need to, this is the thing that, okay, now I already have my application connected, it's connected, and then we should, let's try to. So someone in the audience pointed out that why why not use the Docker image instead, which is a very valid point of it. Can you tell them why yeah. or not? Yeah, actually, because I have a problem with my my uh, Docker uh, how it's called is my Docker uh, desktop. Uh, I need to finish to to solve that or to restart, and I haven't done done it uh, in the previous week. But I promise that for for the next for the next session, I will have my Docker. Uh, uh, fix and we will be using docker images all right good, yeah, good point <laughs> okay so yeah so you see there i have added the only email to the first call mitchy at gmail.com perfect um, so i hope it's not a real email <laughs> so we can and, and i hope that this nobody's real email <laughs> <laughs> probably is so actually we need we already have uh, this uh, conference added, and then we can try to add. 
Now you need, first need to copy the ID over. So okay. to the at conference edition. And then to the conference, uh, which is line number 34. 34, okay. Then right. post. And so we get a 500 as planned. So what do the, what do our logs say? Okay, let's see. And the logs say that Axon server, uh, we had an Axon server remote command handling exception. Uh, and we have the information and we have our message here. So yeah, this seems like at least we have the proper information on the client side to try to figure out what what happened of course yeah the next thing will be like uh, we are I, I don't think it's not necessary to do this right now but the next thing would be like adding here uh, catching the section and trying to render it with the proper response code yeah, that's something we can do with a controller advice from spring yeah. um, let me look it up and paste it in so we get the message backward uh, propagated backwards while we do something else so can we try to um but here my main point is that uh if we go to axon server and we try to see how many commands were issued we can see that we have the add conference command and the add conference edition command because those are actually commands that were sent over the the buses but if we go and search for all the events we only see that we have the add conference added event, which is actually the first event or the event corresponding to the first command handler being processed. But when we received the second command, we validated the command and we did not generate this event. So that thing actually didn't happen in our system. That's the idea, the whole idea of uh, event source, right? Yeah, correct. So, uh, are you working on the... Uh, yeah, I thought I would paste the controller advice in, but I wasn't able to make a new file through code with me, so I thought to put it in the app as a bean. Um, however, I cannot seem to import the app controller advice annotation. Okay, let me do that for you. You can? Oh. Yeah. So code me with me is a nice tool, but it doesn't always do what you want. Yeah. So what you see here, we define an exception handler, which will transform an exception into an HTTP response of type string. And in this case, I will just print the message as a body. So now whenever we get a 500, it will um, basically get a text body back. Okay. So let's try to redo restart our application and yeah. let's see how this happened i had inner class there to try to okay. fix the annotation i think it needs a normal class but i changed it I'm not sure if it's a time for the compilation i uh, i don't know let's let let's see let's if it doesn't see. work we need to restart again okay so so david let's try Start of next week action framework 4.9 is coming out and we should be able to use spring boot dev tools next session wow that's good that's good to hear so that's the first thing that we are going to do uh on yeah. the next session, if you then right? fix your docker setup if you then fix your docker setup finally we can even use the test container a docker sorry the docker compose spring boot dev tools so that's actually is... another reason to try to fix uh finally my Docker uh, desktop. Yeah. Okay. So let's try to run again the same post. Uh, I don't need to create again the the post because the, the the conference is already there. So, but if I run now this, uh, we have a better message. So your controller beautiful working. Perfect. So uh, the other thing that I would like to explore, we have here the. Uh, the exception, of course. But the other idea that I would like to explore is uh, I would like to see which is the aggregate or to explain a little bit more which is are the difference. Because I think we briefly mentioned that on our last episode, 
what is the different or which are the different uh, times in which these event sourcing handlers are, are involved. So just to try to figure out what happens uh, when we receive a command uh, that is attached to a specific aggregate ID, what happens uh, behind the hood, under the hood, sorry. What, what is happening before actually invoking the command holder? How these other event source sorting handlers are, are invoked. And for this, I would love to add, of course, some, uh, some login traces. So we saw the, the first question that I'm asking here is how can I define a static or the equivalent to a static uh, field for defining the logger? All right. So with Kotlin, we have two options. Either we can make just a logger up here, so we can make a file here in this file. Another option would be, and this is actually a bit more tidy, is if you scroll with me to the bottom, David, I'm going to create a companion object, which will have a logger. A companion object is kind of like a static in JVM, but just a little bit different. You can even make variables a static JVM variable. So in this case, I'm going to create a logger. Okay. Add logger. Oh. Or it's class. Okay. Uh, and class.java class. okay. because of the interrupt. So normally, if you want to use the from Java, you even need to put JVM static on it. In this case, we don't use it. We just want to use it locally. So we make the private file logger and now we have a logger. Okay. So then from this moment, I can just uh, add a logger any, 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 in any place I want, right? Definitely. Yeah. Oh, that means that this companion object is kind of uh, adding fields to my, my to my to my class right yeah static fields okay so if you would make multiple instances of a conference it would use the same field so it's often used for things like the singleton pattern for logging for static methods and stuff like that perfect so let's try to add some uh some uh methods here explain uh that uh right now uh we are receiving the command we can even well, we are not going to log this <laughs> oh actually i can i can do this and i can do a small uh reference to to um to something that happened these past two weeks in spain uh a security issue i would say and just to illustrate a little bit better let's try to see that this is uh, i don't know if we have some kind of let's try to say an, an icon for command okay let's put this a police officer who is sending what well, this is not a police officer again yeah. uh i don't know let's use let's use this icon as uh, the icon to receive uh, to indicate that we have received a command and the same we are going to do the same here uh, conference Mission command, and then here, what we are going to do is, uh, we are actually not going to put information conference. Conference the event but for this 
uh, I would like to change this and I would like to specify uh, which is a, a way to indicate which is the moment in which we are uh, invocating the, uh, the, 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 the event sourcing holder. And for this, uh, let's define a icon. Let's try to define a function. Uh, I define this. And then this function uh, is going to form a string. And for this, what I want to do is check which is the, because we have something uh, to check which is the state of our aggregate. If that state is live, it's already something that is live uh, as an instance uh, of our aggregate. Or if it's not live, which means that probably is loading is during the creation phase. So let's say that we are going to return. It's, it's funny when you say, uh, when you try to say live, because you are not used in Spanish for letters to have different yeah. sounds, right? For you, it's yeah. always live. Like, no, live. It's always yeah. live, not I. Yeah. yeah, it's funny to notice. Oh, like, sorry for that. <laughs> no problem. It's, it's, it makes well, Spanish easier. Although you guys have enough irregular verbs to fill a whole country, so. Yeah, um, true. But that's something that I, I'm aware and I keep forgetting about this, this uh, different <laughs> pronunciation. Sorry for that. Well, so uh, in this case, I'm going to use uh, if, the, if, the, if the aggregate is already live, uh, let's try to use uh, this that means that if the aggregate is, is live is just because we are receiving we are invoking the event sourcing handler as part of the process of uh, receiving the processing the event after uh, processing the command handler then this is basically meaning that we are receiving the message the event uh, on our regular uh, on our regular life cycle and if the aggregate life cycle is not live, is that means that it's during the loading phase. So let's try to use an icon to specify that we are actually building that process. And this is something that is not compiling, and I guess this is this has something to do with calling, right? Are you trying to make a ternary operator? We don't have that. It would be awesome, but uh, Kotlin doesn't have it. Um, so in everything in Kotlin, you know, it's trying to be less verbose. Watch this. Hey, what's it doing? So in Kotlin, in order to get a ternary operator, you have to do this. Okay. So you basically write an if statement. Yeah, so, it's what it is, um, but you, we can make it even uglier, right? By um, this. Okay, so let's just return the entire if. Perfect. Let's then uh, add this same uh, the same login here, and then uh, this is conference edition. So uh, let's say that we are going to now let's say that we are going to I don't know if we need to stop and rerun this and hopefully hopefully So now if we try to add uh, the addition for our conference, but 
this time let's put the proper email address and then okay we have received the edition and then we can define for example 2025 and 2026 because we are planning ahead and then, <laughs> big let, ambitions yeah let's try to clean this and let's let's see what happened if we call uh this method to add a conference edition uh to an aggregate that already has different uh editions created so in this case, if we go here, then we can see that previous to invoking the common handler, we are actually invoking the event sourcing handler during the building phase for all the events that happened before. This is corresponding to uh, the result of processing the conference create conference command the add uh, conference edition command for 2023 2024 2025 and then for the 12, 2027 this is the command that we are receiving this is the one that we are uh, processing right now so we add the conference edition command and then of course, we invoke the processing, the event sourcing handler for the new event. So that means that actually the way to recreate the state of the aggregate means that uh, we are going to get all the previous events from the uh, event store, from Axon server, and we are going to apply the event sourcing handlers to uh, recreate the state of our aggregate before actually invoking the command handler. But good thing to see here as well is that if you apply an event during the command, you will immediately invoke the event sourcing handler as well. So what if what would happen if we put a validation event sourcing handler, David? Sorry again. What would happen if uh, if you put a validation in the event sourcing handler? Okay. If we put a validation on the event sourcing handler, uh, let's try to do that, right? Can we quickly move the validation that we added to the event sourcing handler? So does it make sense? No, this doesn't really make sense to move, I guess. Um... I was trying to, to try it out. Yeah. Well, the idea is that uh, if we don't validate the command here and we remove the validation from here and we add the validation here, probably what is going to happen is that we are going to still receive the same, the, the, all the events and we will be rejecting. We will be basically spending time, processing time, because that validation will always fail if this is a state that was not allowed at the time of processing the command the, the command the command on the command handler. Yeah. Yeah. So you run the risks of aggregates never being able to be loaded again, especially if you create validation in the event sourcing handlers afterwards, which you are not there before. Now aggregates that might have been valid before are now invalid and don't load. Yeah. So generally use your validations in your command handlers. Your event sourcing handlers are only there to set future state to validate upon not to be validated on that note what will happen with uh, the other way around i mean if not if we don't buy if we validate because we are saying that validation corresponds to the command handler and changing mm -hmm. the state corresponds to the event sourcing handler what if we just do this on the command instead of here okay let's just the command out if we do this I'll reboot the application and see. Um, I, yeah, first move it. Yeah, true. Just to be on the conference added command. 
and then let's try to do to put it here uh, that's that could be command in this case just in case anyone takes a screenshot <laughs> Okay, so let's try to restart this. And let's, let's see what happened. Uh, well, in this case, we are going to need to define. Well, I, I, I think that. I just add a new conference edition and you will see that it will. Yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking if we could use the same conference. Uh, let's try to define with the right email. So this should be uh, valid, right? Yeah, or this should be. Should be valid. Okay, let's do it. See, now Kotlin is complaining that that late init property you have to find has never been initialized before you call the validation on a later command. And so, we will see that the events have been played on the aggregate, but yeah, the commands have not been played again. They generated events. So because we set the state through a command, now we have lost the state to validate the email. That's the point. So what uh, What if we will, will have initialized with a default value the only email? Probably what we will be seeing happening here is that actually the only email is not set uh, f uh in the right uh in the right command so any other further uh, command will be rejected saying that it's not the the it's not the, the right the right order okay so uh, i think that should be it for for today if we do some kind of recap because i'm also seeing some some questions on the on the on the channel on the chat. Yeah, so there have been two questions. One is whether the code is available after the stream. So yes, we will commit the code um, and you can find it. I have just sent it into the chat as well and we can also show it here on screen. Okay. Now there is another question which is quite advanced. So this goes into, um, sorry, I, I don't know the alphabet your name is written in, so I cannot pronounce your name. Um, so it's about this question. It's kind of out of topic. Yes, it is because it's got quite an, a little bit more advanced than writing an aggregate, but how does Axon handle errors in the chain of microservice calls? Like in the single level saga, you can use transaction outboxing to prevent data from being sent to the bus. And there's a second part of the question before the whole saga succeed. But what if one of step calls another microservice, which is an event source of its own? And should we make one global cycle for such calls or are there other mechanisms? So this is quite a big question and it goes into design over different microservices, right? Here you have a saga pattern, a transaction pattern over many microservices. You can choose here for an orchestrator or for an, um, so what you are suggesting here with one big saga is the orchestrator pattern. There's one big man in the middle that kind of regulates everything. This makes this one man in the middle contain a lot of business logic um, because he does all the compensation for all the different rules of the system. Now, my question would be in this design, when I would be in a session with you, Please draw out the microservices and the different processes that you are talking about here that need to orchestration, because perhaps there is a better way to give um, to give your domain shape, right? So I've noticed that people often have a tendency to make the boundaries too small of one of such microservices. That makes it very heavy to do a lot of messaging. Sure, you need a lot of you want to compartmentalize things, but not the, to the point that it's hurting, right? Um, what I always like to have is an aggregate as instead of a saga. So one event leads to a command to of an aggregate that records the outcome of that step of the saga and then decides on the next step. This is the orchestrator you're talking about. 
but I'm not sure whether you want one orchestrator over many microservices because then they become just inherently dependent on each other. So it's not a real easy question to answer here on the live stream. This is something that is really deep into design and is something really customized, right? Axon has an at least once or an at most once delivery guarantee and which applies to your situation is the yeah is a is something we have to find out in sessions sorry i don't have an easy answer for you but for cases like this uh just also remember that you can you can always go to our discuss channel we have uh, an open uh open platform for discussing and debate, debating things like this in which by the way it's uh it's not just the only uh two of us uh answering but you could also reach out to some other people that not only from axonic but also some other people uh using axonic axon server actually that could reply to your questions if they have a similar scenario or that's which is always uh so it's always if you broaden the amount of people that could answer your topic uh this is something that well you could get more more uh valuable insights so and it's also uh something that is welcome for newbies or for people that uh, are just starting with with action no, don't hesitate to reach out on us. We're quite active on there because we are from Exonic. Uh, but yeah, everyone in Exonic is on this platform, so we'll we'll be happy to help you. Okay, great. So uh, doing a final recap, uh, what we have done, done today is uh, just we have added some kind of validation. We have discussed which is, which is the right point to uh, to deal with command validation and which is the right time to actually change the state of our aggregate. And then we have discussed or tried to explain a little bit more in depth, which is the uh, process by which the aggregate is refreshed, is loaded from the event store by using this or calling this event uh, sourcing handlers for all the previous events. So I will say that for the next session, and I will leave now the question here uh, in the air for this, this next two sessions or this next two weeks, is for those that who for those who may think that this is a little bit an overload because you are uh, spending a lot of time processing the previous events, is there any better way to do this? Is there any uh, any better way to restore uh, the aggregate state before actually invoking the command? And there is. We have yes, there is. <laughs> so we don't need to do next episode. There is, and uh, we're not going to help you with that. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, we'll help you with that. So next episode, we'll explore the methods to make your aggregate more performant in the face of a very big event stream. Okay. And with that, uh, I think it's been a good session today and we are right now keeping more or less on time to what we promised to try to do uh, just one hour. And again, give us any kind of feedback of the ideas that will, you will love to see in the in the in the sessions or if uh, you think that this the pace is too slow or too uh, quick or uh, you will love to see some other uh, topics or how to deal with some other uh, things so we will try to adapt and again we already have some have have some feedback and we are planning some sessions in the future to try to add to invite some guests probably and we could actually uh, even implement th some modules in in some uh, other languages even but we are not there yet we will do that but 
the idea is just keep all the feedback or all your ideas coming and we will we will try to adapt to, to that right. sounds good david and with that we're gonna see you off have a good two weeks build a lot of action apps and we will speak to you soon bye bye